One thing about dbt is it does require you to have a git repository in order to work with it so in today's video i'm going to show you how you can start using dbt even if you don't have a git repository ready to go and we're going to do this by taking advantage of a really cool feature on dbt cloud which allows you to use them to host your git repository until it's ready and i'll show you how this works and also before we dive in if you're new to dbt or you're just trying to understand maybe some of the best practices I have a free starter guide. I call it the starter guide for DBT. It's linked down below. And the whole goal is to kind of use what I've seen so far to help you better understand what DBT is, some of the best practices. And I've also added a little checklist to help you kind of figure out how to start your new projects. So with that said, let's get started and see how you can start using DBT even without a Git repository. So this may look a little different if you've just set up a dbt cloud instance but in my case i already have one but what i'm going to do is create a new project so here it's going to give you a guide on step by step how to do this we'll create a project establish a database connection and add a repository and again this is the step where we're going to have uh, be able to do this without anything like github so the first thing is we need to give it a name and i'll call this data project demo we can just continue now which type of database should we connect to and we can see there's a couple options here. In our case, I have a Snowflake environment, so I'll select Snowflake. So let's set up this connection. We'll call this Snowflake. I'm just gonna go through and fill all this out so you don't have to watch me do it. So I've gone through and added all this information in here. I did account admin for the sake of demo to avoid any permissions issues, but this is something along with the warehouse that you'll wanna have something specific for TBT if you're able to. And now at the bottom, we have development credentials, and these are your personal development credentials not deployment so this uh, is something different and especially in dbt cloud it's something uh, you'll run into a lot and so let's go ahead and test this it succeeded we'll go ahead and continue and now here's where we can determine the repository if you already have something built whether it's on the cli or just pre-built on github here's where you can you know clone this in here and reference it right away oh, i don't want to do that oh and it accidentally sent me back but that's okay we can go to our back to our project here and just pick up where we left off. Okay, so instead of, like I said, these other options, what you can do is select manage. So essentially what this allows you to do is create uh, your own repo on dbt cloud servers. And then as soon as you're ready to offload that to, let's say, GitHub or GitLab or something else, you can just get in touch with them and they'll make it easy for you to, to do that. But this allows you to get started without any of that. So let's create a repo name. We'll, we'll call this data project demo. Just give it the same name just for consistency and let's create. So here it just gives it some default settings. You can see putting it on their, probably their own GitHub site here, but essentially it is doing this for you. Uh, back in our project, let's we should be all set up at this point. Let's go to develop. It's gonna load up our project. Again, we've set the database. We have this manage repository. Let's see how this looks. Uh, so now it loaded up and we can see it has the, the long name here for the project and we can initialize our project so let's do that and we can also see it by default it's on the main branch but by selecting initialize it built our skeleton for us here uh, obviously you probably don't want to keep this name long term for your project that's why it's really just to help you get started but then you can uh you know export this to something else but it comes built in with all of the default stuff just like you would if you were to initialize this locally through the command line uh, has all of this stuff in here uh, that we would need and then we can uh, go ahead and commit this. So let's just call this initial commit just to, to get it going and we can start working. So let's let's see this in action. Let's create a new branch, my first branch. Let's just see it run and build these models in a new schema. So I don't have anything here right now for my, my dbt MJ con, but let's see what happens if we just do a dbt run. And it looks like that worked. It created the table in that schema, my first table or my first dbt model, second, so let's go here and refresh. Here it is, here's the table. Uh, here's a view uh, on top of that. And so here we can see it deployed them successfully and we can you know, do whatever we wanna do. If we wanted to you know, make a change to any of them, say we deleted this comment, we can use this here as if we were working on any other Git product. Uh, what we can do is merge to main and it will do this on our behalf. We don't have to go through and do anything else. There's no reviews here so it is a little bit limited and it automatically moves us back to main uh, and if we go to checkout branch uh, that one is still there but you know it moved us back and it automatically handles that merging for us so it is slightly limited 
in, in that regard. But if you're just looking to get set up, test it out, see how everything works, this is a great option for you. So that's all we have for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. And if you're still looking for some guidance on DBT, consider grabbing a copy of that free starter guide link down below. I think it'll help you out a lot. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.